I'm Howard Phillips Lovecraft, and today's question comes to us from Fredo, and he rather simply asks, why do we dream? Now, I should say that far smarter people than myself have tried to wrestle with this question for thousands of years. Scientists and philosophers, shamans and priests have all wondered why we dream. Where do dreams come from? What purpose could they possibly have? And I've been fascinated with the stuff of dreams ever since I was a child, and plagued by, by night terrors and sleep paralysis that made me eager to learn more about how we dream, how to engage in lucid dreaming, and the like. And as such, my studies have led me to truly appreciate the mechanics of dream. You see, as we begin to fall asleep and lose consciousness, uh, our alpha waves begin to decrease in their frequency, and as they do, they're replaced by pontogeniculo occipital waves, which presage the going into deep REM, or rapid eye movement, sleep, where our most vivid and memorable dreams take place. However, even prior to this, we've already begun dreaming. You see, we have many dreams throughout the night. Most we have no memory of, but they still serve an important role. You see, most people know about the five stages of sleep, but fewer know about the five stages of dreams. Now, these are, of course, the sentinel, the itinerant, the acolyte, the magus, and the outcast. Now, it is always the same five, always in this particular order. So, if you're having difficulty remembering it, there's a useful schoolyard mnemonic you can deploy. This is, of course, Selfish Ichabod ate Molly's omelette. I hope you find that useful. Now, the reason why it's so important to get a good night's sleep is that if at any point this cycle of stages is interrupted, it can have profound impacts on one's health, one's mood. So, we must make sure to always make our way all the way through the five stages of dreams. Now, part of the reason for this is that as we're in our deep sleep, those same alpha waves that decreased begin to return in frequency, and as they get stronger and stronger, they have to be processed through the pineal gland in order to form a sort of shared psychic latticework known as the ur conscience. Now, some people confuse the ur conscience with the creation of the dreamlands from my stories, but of course the, the dreamlands are fiction, and the ur conscience is simple scientific fact. Although, funnily enough, we've discovered that the only creatures that share in the Ur conscience are indeed hominids, felines, and a, a third category that we've been unable to discern as it bears no relation to anything we've previously taxonomically categorized. So, that's how we dream. Why do we dream? That answer still remains a mystery. Some people think it's a way for us to, to process all the, the experiences and emotions that we take in during our waking life, a way of categorizing and simply dreaming is a byproduct of that result. Personally, I'm of the theory that the whole thing is some sort of defense mechanism. Although just what is being defended, and against whom, I don't know. We're still in the dark as far as that concerns. But in the meanwhile, sweet dreams till sunbeams find you. Sweet dreams that leave all worries behind you. But in your dreams, whatever they be, dream a little dream of me. As always, I'm a Howard Phillips Lovecraft. Thank you, and sweet dreams.